Thank you. Uh, first of all, I am not the first time vote voter, although people might think that I am. But uh, let me be aside. Uh, if you know my student number in UP, uh, definitely I am not the first time vote. But let me be aside. Uh, John Kenneth Galbraith once said that all democracies live in fear of the ignorant. We must have a knowledgeable electorate abreast of the issues. Otherwise, there is a surrender to the voices of ignorance and error. Thus, forums like this, debates like this, is a move or a step in the right direction. And with that, I would like to congratulate the Ateneo Debating Society and the UP Debating Society and the Philippine JCs for this particular event. Congratulations. A round of applause. Clearly, knowledge is power, we all know. That is the third paradigm shift, as mentioned by a lot of futurists. He who controls the access to information and power controls everything. That's why we have Bill Gates as one of the richest men in the world. If we have an informed and enlightened citizenry, we will have a responsible citizenry who will vote wisely. That is why it is really important that our citizens are properly informed of the issues at hand. Now, having said that, I would like to just make mention to our potential senators who are now seated at the other side of the, the stage, that there are a lot of laws now in Congress. In fact, according to an Ateneo study, if I am not mistaken, it takes about, uh, it would cost about 148 million pesos to pass a particular law. If you look at the laws passed by Congress in the 13th Congress, which is just about 84, and the budget of Congress, which is about 12.5 billion, it is clear that the past Congress, although they did pass a number of legislation that was uh, a bitter pill to swallow on the economic reforms, but despite that, it was still a Congress more on promises and short in fulfilling these promises. In fact, a lot of laws are still pending, and I would like to urge the potential members of the new Congress to take into consideration again this uh, uh, plethora of laws which need to be passed, like the land use, like the political dynasty law, like the national cap on the payment of uh, external debts, which has been draining the economy, as we all know. 50% of the national budget even goes to the payment of this, and it's only an interest. So again, let me just uh, summarize by saying that there are a lot of laws out there meant to be pending and meant to be passed, and there are also a lot of laws out there that really needs just proper execution and implementation. Thank you very much again for having me here. My pleasure. Thank you, Mike. Uh, may I now invite Rina Menestabit for her summation. Yes, um, of course I'm not the first time voter, but I would like to recall the first time I ever voted. I was already in my 30s and uh, the mother of my two children. That first time was in 1986 uh, when the vote, the choice was between Marcos and Cory Aquino. Before then, I had boycotted all of the elections of the Marcos regime, but I still remember today the excitement I felt the first time I lined up at the uh, voting precinct. Uh, in the years since, I've lost a lot of that enthusiasm. And uh, it really did seem like a chore uh, and an obligation that you ha just had to fulfill. I'm beginning to be excited about <laughs> May 15 now. After hearing our candidates here, I just wish there were more senatorial candidates who showed up. Uh, I'd like to thank especially Kapatiran for all of their candidates showing up. And um, for, so, for my friend Sonia Rocco and Alan Cayetano for taking time off from their campaign. These are the, just the last minute, uh, last minute campaigning necessary and it really is a sacrifice of time to participate in something like this. I'm very grateful that uh, they did show up because I think exercises like this are necessary for, uh, for the building up of an educated and responsible uh, electorate, and especially first-time voters, young people. You do need more information and quality information at that, and you need more opportunities to get up close and personal with our candidates than just uh, seeing what they are on TV ads and campaign posters or on huge rallies. 
Uh, and uh, I, I wish candidates were more responsible about reaching out to voters, especially first-time voters, and giving them a substantial taste of what their work would be in the legislature. So thank you very much, and also for the JCs for sponsoring an event like this. These events really shape uh, quality uh, candidates and quality electorates. And if we have a combination of both, I don't think our country can go wrong, but only if our votes are counted right. <laughs> are counted first and then counted right. So thank you very much to all of you for being here and, and taking the time of also from your summer vacation to listen to our candidates and what we have to say and to make your, the right choices for you. Thank you. Thank you very much.